everyone and welcome to The Outsider. My name is Lil Queen and I hope life is treating you well. In this video, we're going to talk about being an international student and what it takes to be one. My first experience, I ate a cheese. I'm thinking about cheese. <laughs> I was introduced to Western food. There's a lot of study destinations as we know like UK, US, Canada, Australia and even New Zealand and people spend an upward of $200,000 just to obtain their degrees but is it really worth it? In this video we're going to particularly focus on Australia as an international study destination. According to the Institute of International Education, Australia is currently the third preferred destination for international students and it pumped in $34 billion into the economy just in 2019. That is huge, right? So what is it all about? What is this international study? Is it really worth your money? And that is what we are going to focus on today. And I'm going to be giving you the ins and outs of being an international student in Australia. And by the end of the video, part two, you're going to be the judge for yourself whether you're ready to spend your money on being an international student. All right, the process of being an international student in Australia can be tedious, cumbersome and tiresome because there's a long process to it and most people give up. Most people are denied visas because there is a criteria to be satisfied before you qualify to become an international student. The first step to being an international student is of course application for a visa. For you to apply for a visa, most people go to agents. These agents have been contacted by Australian universities to bring students to them and before you apply for the visa you have to of course apply for a school the application for a school is another process in which there are things that you need to satisfy that is where the agents come in most people think that they can do this by themselves at the beginning and then in the middle of it they actually find that it's difficult because these agents play a certain role you have to pay an amount of about 100 uh, US dollars to the agents and of course that is excluding the visa fee. After making your school application you have to wait for about three weeks to one month to get a response. When you get a response from your university it's called an offer. An offer is basically telling you we are offering you an opportunity to be a student in our institution so they need you to accept it and you accepting it is actually paying a school fee now you have to pay a semester worth of school fees upfront these school fees can be about um you know 18000 australian dollars and that in a year you can pay about 34000 australian dollars approximately of course this fee depends on the school and when you pay this fee they give you something called confirmation of enrollment confirmation of enrollment is when the school has actually accepted you as the a student once you get confirmation of enrollment is when your agent can go ahead and apply for a visa for you the agent does all the weightlifting as i have told you They're the ones who will also apply for your visa. Applying for a visa is a whooping 500 US dollars. Australian visas are expensive, especially student visas. After they apply for your visa, what you have to do now is sit and wait. The wait can be long. Personally, I waited for two months to get a response that I've gotten my visa. It can be longer for others depending on a lot of factors. You need to prove beyond doubt that you actually satisfied to be an international student in Australia. You need bank statements that actually prove that you are able to support yourself while in Australia. You need to prove that you can pay for your accommodation. You need to prove that you can pay for your one year upfront school fees, which you don't have to pay immediately but you have to show in your bank statements that you are able to pay a year of school fees. If you manage to get your visa, if you qualify you get your visa because there's a lot of criteria, there's a lot of things you need to satisfy for you to get a visa and that's where agents come in. As I told you earlier, it is safer to use an agent rather than do it yourself because these agents have mastered the art of what is exactly needed what will be your downfall, what will help you, and they will advise you accordingly before you go into that path. When you receive your visa, it can be declined, which is sad. 
heartbreaking. If you're lucky, you receive your visa and you have to get ready to travel for your studies. Now, this is the part where you have to consider accommodation. Where are you going to live? This is the part where your agent also discusses with you because their job doesn't end at when you get the visa. They also can advise you on accommodation and there's a lot of options when it comes to accommodation. The first option is actually if you have friends and family in Australia. Those are the people who you can discuss with them to help you when it comes to accommodation. There's a choice of living in a school hostel. So these hostels are provided by the schools and you pay the money to them to stay in the school. There's also an option of renting. Renting if you are rich, of course. If you have money, you can rent by yourself, no problem. The problem with that is most of the real estate agents need you to have a history of renting so that they can rent you a place to live. And and if you are an international student, the chances of having a history of renting in Australia is nil. So it can be difficult renting by yourself. Another option is renting with other people also, with friends living together. But it needs you to know people, no friends. Sometimes before you get here, you're connected with friends and this the school that does all the job of making sure that you are starting to get connected with people even before you get here. Another option is called homestay. Homestay is where you live with an Australian family. Uh, this family welcomes you, they give you a room of your own, they give you the rules of living in that house and of course you have to pay something to live there depending on their arrangement, I don't know, it will depend on that particular family. Now, when you travel to Australia, when you book your flights and travel to Australia, it can take long depending on which country you're traveling from, but generally, Australia is far, it is down under, so it takes quite a while. Being picked up from the airport depends also on your arrangement. If you don't know anyone, if you don't have family or even friends, the school will arrange to pick you up at the airport, which is quite a good thing. You are in a strange country, you don't know left, right, center, you don't know what direction is east, where is north and all that. So it's quite advantageous if the school can pick you up if you don't know anyone. This is the end of part one of the video and in the next video it will be the most interesting part which is living, working and studying in Australia. If you like this video please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in part two of the video.